recording. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Joe from N90X and I wanted to do a quick update uh, and talk to you about uh, Nutanix. That's right, Nutanix. Look, if you're looking for a replacement for your VMware hypervisor, I think Nutanix might be uh, might be the best solution. Uh, honestly, I found it to be easier than Proxmox. And it supports the Citrix environment. So if you are running a Citrix environment and want to leave VMware, Nutanix might be the ticket. I don't know. I'm using the Community Edition here. And I just wanted to show you, I got uh, within a couple of hours of installing it, I got a Windows 10 machine up and a Debian, Debian uh, 12 machine up. I also have my free encryption product, the N90X Asynchronous Pro version from N90X.info. You can download it there for free. And you can see this is, this is a uh, Linux x86 or x64 you know, Intel, and it runs here. If I run it, you may have to after you after you extract it, you may have to uh, give it uh, execution rights, right? So chmod plus x on this file, but then it'll run. And here it is. And on Windows, the same thing. Uh, the same thing. It's uh, just an executable on Windows. Just double click it. It's compiled Python, so you'll get this black screen, but you can minimize it. And uh, the actual GUI should pop up. Takes a quick second. What's up? There we go. Yeah, it, um, it takes a quick second. That's really bizarre, but uh when i f downloaded it and first time i ran it windows uh had to i had to give it an exception because windows thinks it's a potential virus or something because of the encryption algorithms i believe that are baked in who knows but you have to just say yes and you can run it on windows and it's the free version it's 2k um I've, I've demos, demoed this before, but I just want to show you. Look, I've already created generated keys from here. If I browse for a public key, it's on my desktop. I can grab the public key, open, and if I wanted to. So I got the public key. With the public key, I can encrypt something. So let's say I wanted to encrypt the actual program. Sure, I could do that if I have somebody's public key. Uh, once I have the public key, I can do encrypt. It should pop up over here as an N90X file. Here it is as an N90X. If you try to read it, it's it's encrypted. So open with, I don't know, you could try uh, Notepad. It's going to just be garbage if it even displays anything at all. It's wow. This is Windows is a performance shit hog. Uh, yeah, it's just garbage. That at least to the to the human human it's garbage now. But if I grab that that now that encrypted file, which is called .n90x right at the at the extension, and then I decrypt it, it's gonna put a file here .clear. Oh wait a minute. Oh I didn't give it ah I didn't give it the private key. My bad. I tried to decrypt it without the private key, which I have here. Just have to select it. Uh, so in this case, grab the private key, which is on the desktop, the private key, and the file that I want to decrypt, which is the N90X file. Click decrypt. There it is. It's dot clear. It's up here dot clear. Obviously, you'd want to rename it. But this dot clear file, um, it's it, it's not going to run because it's dot clear. But if you were to rename it, same thing with the text file or PDF file, it's going to always have the dot clear at the end. So you'd have to rename it. Oh, and get rid of the N90X because that was from the encryption days. And then if I name it, let's say two, so now it's N90X async. 
Pro 2. Yes, we'll change it. It's going to run it. See, there it goes. It'll run it. So it's, it's basically back to normal, as you can see. So there it is, uh, running that version. Now I can obviously delete it. And this one, the encrypted file, I can delete it. It'll delete, it'll uh, encrypt just about anything. So that's, uh, I just want to show you that. But um, but like getting back to Nutanix, um, uh, I thought it was actually a little bit easier. Okay, then Proxmox. Now, the good thing about Proxmox is that it'll run on just about any hardware, especially old hardware that you have, okay? So if you've got really old hardware, older than Sandy Bridge, you need Sandy Bridge or newer to run Nutanix in your home lab, the Community Edition. So this, what I'm running on, if you followed, if you got my second book, Netscaler Hacks, you know that I've encouraged you to buy Citrix hardware, especially the newer stuff. The XDX8000 is Sandy Bridge. So this is actually running on a four core, 3.5 gigahertz Sandy Bridge processor, Xeon processor. Um, I've got four cores, eight threads. Um, let's do the same thing here. Get the public key, public key, get the private key, private key, just to make it easier. File to encrypt, let's encrypt the uh, program itself. Uh, encrypt it, there it is, uh, N90X, let's grab it, browse it. Uh, that's the encrypted file, we're gonna open it, we're gonna decrypt it. <laughs> And here it is as clear. And what's interesting is clear. It gave it almost the same type of icon as this one. I, I don't know if it's gonna if it would run it straight away. Uh, no known program. So cancel. And I don't think it's uh, it's got. Uh, let's see here. CD desktop. I don't think it has executable. It's not executable. Dot clear. So anyhow, uh, as you can see, the original, it's, and the decrypted, same number of bytes, it's the exact same file. Um, but the encrypted file, it's gonna be bigger usually because of the encryption, yeah, it's it's not, it's 50, 50 kilobits, kilobytes bigger, whatever. Uh, 15 megs versus 20 megabytes is the file size. So anyway, um, just wanted to show you that Get, now we can get rid of the clear one. Can we do that? No, clear. Move to trash. And the N90X. Move to trash. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, if you've got Sandy Bridge or newer, you can run Nutanix. This is, like I said, so I've got eight threads here. Um, it looks like the, the CVM, it's... Not necessarily running 100% of the, all the time, but it seems to be consuming at least one CPU or one virtual CPU. Um, okay, to run, sorry, let's get to the heart of the matter. To run Nutanix, you're going to need at least initially two USB drives. They recommend uh, a 32 gig for the boot medium. You cannot use um, vert, what's it? Vert, not vert IO. Um, Oh, shit, the, the, um, the program that runs, which you, where you can have multiple ISOs on a single USB stick, that does not work. You have to have a dedicated ISO using Rufus to boot the, um, the, the Nutanix uh, ISO. Then you're going to put that on. At, I, I'm, I put it on a 32 gig uh sand disk ultra usb 3 that's for the hypervisor and then you need two ssds one for the cvs or csv the uh the whatever the, the virtual machine that this this is running on this is the content virtual machine i'm not sure what they what it stands for cvs it's kind of like the sdx has the uh, svm so the service virtual machine this is the control virtual machine C cvm uh, and then you need another SSD for data. So uh, this is not really, uh, a, a, you know, a review of the, the Nutanix, but, you know, it has some critical issues here. Fail to upgrade the cluster, that's true. 
Oh, that's one thing that you guys gonna want to warn you on. Uh, I installed it using the community edition that I downloaded, and then it did say that I could upgrade it. I tried to upgrade it. After upgrading it, it would not boot. So I don't know if that was my system, system specific stuff, but because it is a Linux distro of some sort, when it boots up, you can see the previous uh, boot and you can select the previous one. So I, I selected the previous one and after about 20 minutes, I could get back into C the CVM right here and then restart and start up the uh, virtual machines I got. Like I said, I, I installed Debian 12. I think I gave it four gigs. Let's go, we can check it out. Home, VMs. I gave it, uh, well, let's get rid of that. We don't need to see the controller. Oh yeah, that's the controller. That's the CVM. See, oh, it's using 16 gigs of RAM and two cores. What? Yeah, that's that's crazy. So really, only 16 gigs is available. Um, I, I guess it's only using 66. 60. What is that? 66 percent of the memory. So maybe we could. I could give it less memory. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting that it's using 16 gigs. Um, I'm still new to this platform, but it, it seems pretty nice. Um, yeah, so it's using two cores. I didn't know it was using two cores. I didn't know that. I thought, it, well, whatever. It's using two cores. Uh, Debian, I gave it one core. Windows 10, I gave it two cores. Uh, both the virtual machines, I gave it four gig. They gave them four gigs. And, the, you know, the hard drive, it's thinly provisioned, so it uh, didn't really matter. I think I, what I gave uh, Debian 40 gigs and Windows 60 gigs. Or maybe 70 gigs, whatever. Um, that's what I gave it. And you have to have the Vert IO drivers. I'm going to put a link in the description of where you can get the community edition. You have to create an account uh, to download it. And you're going to need <coughs> that same account information when you do the installation and the first time you log in to the CVM, you need to give that username and password of the Nutanix Community Edition account that you created, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, but that's about it. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still going to get play with this some more in my lab, but I'm, I'm, I'm really liking it. Um, and like I said, it supports Citrix. So if you're trying to transition from Citrix to uh, a, a different uh, vert hypervisor than VMware, I mean, your only choices really are Zen, um, Zen Server, and um, I don't know about Zen itself, but it's for sure Zen Server, that a Citrix product, or, uh, or, or Nutanix that I'm aware of that support Citrix. Because I'm not saying that Proxmox wouldn't support it, but I don't think the hypervisor, the Proxmox hypervisor, knows how to talk to the uh, Citrix, uh, d um, you know, domain controller. Um, we call it the, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, the uh, XD, the uh, Zen server domain controller. I forget what the hell they call it, the actual name for it. Uh, Anyway, it'll come to me after this, after I finish this. All right, well, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, subscribe so you can get more updates as we go along. This has been Joe from N90X. Talk to you later.